So, hello everyone. Warm welcome on our Wednesday afternoon. It's Marcus time. It's Wednesday, the 1st of April. Nice to meet you here. Hi guys. Today we are going to talk about trading with seasonal patterns. Completely very, very interesting topic. So, including the following topics. What are seasonal top, uh, patterns? What are some seasonal patterns in popular assets? And how traders can trade some of or each of these patterns and let's talk about some examples of uh, seasonal trades based on historical prices. It's, it's a not so easy topic, but uh, I want to explain it in the right way or in a correct way so you can understand it. I hope you make sure that you are stay until the end of this webinar or the video because I'll be showing you how you can predict the future prices with such seasonal patterns. Okay, it's not a holy grail, but we can predict it a little bit. So my name is Marcus Gabel. I'm a speaker, I'm a professional analyst, a trader, of course, coach and uh, support or yes, um, how should I say, escort service in, in trading. And I've been trading the global markets for over 22 years right now. And if you want to have more information about me, um, then you will find it on my homepage, dowhow-trading.com. In this webinar uh, series, Trading Spotlight, I guess the best webinar series ever. I'm partnering with Admiral Markets, which is a Forex and CFD broker that offers trading uh, on over 8,000 different financial instruments through one of the world's best trading platforms, MetaTrader 5. So um, finally, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube later, maybe, then remember to like this video, share it with other traders and subscribe so you will never miss an episode. So my microphone is completely loud, is full on. Let me check it just a second. Let me check it. Yes, it's 100%. So maybe you should uh, give a little bit more power on your speaker, please. Okay, so let's go on guys. And uh, let's talk a little bit seasonal patterns. So Look outside, today it's a really sunny day, but uh, here in Germany, especially in Bavaria, here uh, close to Munich, I'm placed here and close to Munich, we have minus two degrees. So it's March, no, geez, it's April, the first of April, it's not a joke. It's first of April and it's sunny, but it's damn cold. And it's still a little bit winter time. So let's talk about the dictionary definition of seasonal patterns. A seasonal price trend is the ten tendency of a particular market to move in a particular direction at a particular time of the year, day or week. So I give you this picture here with winter, spring, fall and uh, summer, of course, so you can compare it a little bit. Seasonality is an important force in the markets and exist in every single market independently of people, of course. And these fluctuations are usually due to economic conditions and are often related to the business cycle. So this is the definition of seasonal patterns you will find in Google or in a dictionary. So, but this it's a special price behavior, so we can call it special price behavior, with a special tendency in every market. But seasonals are very well known, uh, in, not in forex markets, are more in commodities or in metals, so and sometimes in indices as well. So this is uh, basically definition of uh, what mean, what's the meaning of seasonal patterns. So, and let me try to explain it a little bit easier because sometimes people think seasonal trading is really complicated, but let me tell you this one, it's not. As long as you understand how, what's happened there. So a simpler way to explain it a little bit, all living things need time and the optimal condition to grow. And this will never change. If you plant a seed, maybe of a tree, nice. You can give it the best ground, you can give it water, 
And then you can stand there and then you can say, now, come on, grow up, grow up. So when will you ripen up? So that you know that doesn't work. You cannot stand there and wait if the tree will grow up. Uh, in that case, I, will, I guess you will grow up by yourself and getting older and older. So it needs time and of course the optimal conditions to grow. If such a seed has no water, it will not ripen up, it will not grow up. Everything that lives, lives according to seasons in planting, growing, and harvesting times. These things we know in our whole life. We live with it, but of course this effect has also an impact on all areas of life, including, and that's the point, trading. Why? People, we look at it, we plant the seed, we are waiting that it's grow up, then we were waiting that it's ripping up, ripens up. So, and people are the same, they make the trading. That's the basic reason why seasonal patterns exist in trading, because humans are, are responsible for this special behavior of a price. So, as you know, we trade the price, and prices have also seasons. Sometimes they are cheaper, more expensive, or at a fair value zone or level. Never forget that, guys, we trade the price. And I think this is one of my beloved messages in every, in every uh, webinar. We trade the price. And at that point, you understand it completely then you stay away from emotionally trading because you trade the price. Doesn't matter what is standing in the chart, what, what is written in the chart, maybe Dow Jones or gold or silver. Forget it and then you see I trade the price. Don't ma doesn't matter what is written in the chart. And if you understand that point, then you can uh, trade with really huge distance. And you don't need to be afraid about trading or what happened in the chart. So, but as you know, back to the seasonals, summer and winter are not always predictable. Why not? Let me explain it easier uh, again. I'm here, I'm sitting here in Germany, especially in Bavaria. And a couple of years ago, I remember we had a lot of snow. We had so much snow that we were not able to drive with our cars through the streets. So trucks must carry out the snow from, from the town out, outside of the town. So much snow we had a couple of years ago. The last two years, we hadn't any kind of snow. Here, especially at my place, Yes, it was raining, it was bad con better conditions, we had what, it was cold. Yes, one or two days we had a little bit snow, but it, it, um, it didn't uh, keep on the street because it was not enough, so it was not predictable. I don't know what will bring the next winter season if we have one, I don't know. And I don't know, maybe you remember here in Germany, Last year, we had such a hot summer over weeks and weeks and weeks with almost three months, it, it absolutely amazing hot uh, degrees. We had, I guess, over four, five, almost six week, weeks, we had almost 40, 40 degrees here in Germany. That's abso absolutely unbelievable. It was too hot for us uh, weak German guys here. So we cannot predict what will happen this year in summer. Maybe we will get a rainy summer or maybe we will get a hot summer. The predictions or the forecasts for the seasons are very unclear, I would say. Nobody knows what will happen. So 
the same, but you know, one thing you know, there will come a summer time and there will come an autumn time and there will come next winter time. But if you will have hot degrees, if you will have a snow in the next winter, both of us, we cannot know. But we know winter will come. I know exactly. Otherwise, I guess I'm not longer on planet Earth. <laughs> but uh, let's see what will happen. Actually, we don't know what will happen. So the same is true for prices, guys. They do not always behave in the same way. But one thing we know, they increase and they decrease. They increase and they decrease. That's, you know, the same that we will know summer and winter will come, but how hot or how cold or, or how many snow we will have, we don't know. That's a very interesting point. And the same is the behavior in such a kind of prices. So let's see some seasonal patterns in uh, popular, popular assets. And guys, never forget, please, I'm a German guy. So my, my, my English is German as well, you know. But I hope you will understand what I want to try to explain. So there are seasonal patterns in almost every asset, almost every asset. In fact, a very easy seasonal pattern exists in indices like the DAX or Dow Jones or S&P 500. Why? Yes, of course, we see high volatility in the beginning of every year and very less volatility over the European summer and holidays like Christmas. Why? Okay, banks and other, and other big companies and firms must invest at the beginning of a year. And there are some strategies, of course. If, for example, there exists a, a year, a yearly strategy, why? If the DAX is after the, uh, the first seven days in plus, then you have to go long because the whole of the year will be in plus. But if the DAX, the first seven days in minus, then you will have a bad year. Just a strategy with some seasonal interesting behaviors in the DAX, for example. But basically, we can see people use to invest their money uh, in the beginning of a year. But if they must save their money for the holiday or you have to buy some Christmas presents, then you have to save your money and you will not ex uh, invest so much money in shares or in other things. So European summertime and holidays like Christmas or something other uh, holidays are less volatility. This is a basically seasonal pattern. And you know, like um, Sally, Mo, Sally May and go away, but don't forget to come back in September. So this is the point, such like a little bit uh, seasonals. So you can also watch some seasonal behavior in assets like coffee, because their supply levels depend on the success of harvest. So I remember this year, no, this year, last year, um, I know such uh, people, they thought they can buy coffee, but then we had a really, really bad harvest in Brazil and the prices of coffee, coffee dropped sharply down and they lost a lot of money. So it's just a seasonal pattern. It is not, of course, not the holy grail. So let's have a look at coffee, at a seasonal pattern. So look at this one. And I want to draw for you again. Where is my, where is it? There we go. Here we go. So there is mine. So as you can see, the black line is the current year. This was December and the beginning of this year. And the blue lines are the past years. But so you can see, look at the special month. So, Vincenzo, good afternoon. So look at this one. So you can see 
in uh, maybe in September. So look this September price. This was September. Look at this one. Almost every year, not, a, not uh, almost every year, we had latest at the mid of September. We can see higher and rising prices. You see, even this year, we are sometimes we had in the past some uh, how should I say high volatility, but at the end we had at the end of the month higher prices. Look at this one, even this one we had higher prices at the end of the month. Or you can see, have a look at this one. It was in June. You can see June. So let's see what happened. So this year we had higher prices. So then you see that was, and this one here, even higher prices, even we had in between falling prices, but at the end, the price rise, rose up and we had higher prices at uh, higher than the beginning of the month. So this year, just a little bit. Even you see, we had falling and the rising prices, but a little bit higher price at the end of the month. So the other couples, only this year, only this year, you can see there we didn't have higher prices. So, and this year again, but not so much. So you see, it's not depend on uh, at a holy grail. Yes, coffee, for example, it depends on season and month. But if you have such a seasonal chart, you can predict it and you can know most of the times special things will happen, but not always. So look for coffee in November. So let's see this one. It's interesting. So this year, I don't know years, it doesn't matter, we had higher prices. So, and all the other years, we had falling prices. Look at this one, sharply falling prices. This year, falling prices. So this year, falling prices. And this year, slightly falling prices. Only the one year we had slightly higher prices. So you see one, two, three, four times falling prices and two times in different years, higher prices. So you see, it's not a holy grail, but you can see it works and can prove it. So, and later in this uh, webinar, I will show you how you can use it. So look at this one in December, for example, next month, look at this one, December, coffee. So this year, higher prices. This year, the current year or the last year, slightly the same, nothing happens, no plus, no minus. So the year before, slightly falling prices. This year, slightly or almost the same, no falling prices. And this year, slightly higher prices. So you see, if you have such a seasonal chart, you can predict what could happen in the next year in this special month. So if have you some uh, insights based on our full webinars or all the webinars from Paul Jens and me, we talk to trend trading and so on. You can compare it with the seasonal patterns and then you can predict if you manage, if you can manage your risk, you have a great chance. This is just only one example in coffee. I want to show you more examples, but this is really, really interesting. So for the next one, patterns, for example, in DAX. So let's see uh, in, um, yes, February, January and February. Start with the end of January. Look at this one. So this is DAX. The different years. So this year, that's the black line, the black line, higher prices. In one year, you can see higher prices, higher prices, 
Only the one year we have falling prices. But in this in year between it, higher prices. So you see one, two, three, four years, higher prices. Only one year we have falling prices. But this is, was a really, really bad year. Take the next one, February. Very, very interesting. So start at the beginning of the month and to the next year. Look at this one. Higher prices. This year, higher prices. The other one higher prices, only this month falling, and then that year small falling or almost the same. So you see one, two, three, four, three times up, two times down. Or next, that's completely interesting, March. So you see, this is actually this year, you see the black line is this year. This is a completely, almost completely uh, complete um, current chart. So you see the year up, year before up, up. So what could happen this year? I don't know. We know this year it doesn't work. Why? We have coronavirus. This year it's going down. So. And so you can compare it even in indices. So just have a look at uh, orange juice. I love orange juice, maybe you too. So let's see, special month. Okay, in May. So you see this one. Higher prices, higher prices this year higher prices at the end of the month, starting the beginning, of course, higher prices. The one year, almost the same, and only this one year, bad harvest, lower prices. But one, two, three, four times, almost five times, you have higher prices in May in orange choice. Only the one and only year, we had lower prices. So um, let's see, yes, December. Very, very interesting, December. You see, lower prices at the end of December. This year, or last year, sorry, lower prices in December. The one year, lower prices. The next one, lower prices. This year, almost the same, but here, almost lower prices. So we have almost one, two, three, four, five, six times in December, there's almost 100% probability that orange choice, the price of orange choice will go down in December. Guys, this is a very interesting seasonal patterns you can use for your own trading. Maybe if you use some option uh, options or CFDs or something else, or maybe you buy orange choice directly by futures in that case, uh, for example. Okay, do I have one again? Yeah, Euro, this is Euro. Uh, this is the current year you can see. So let's see a special year in August in uh, Euro. This is August to December, September, sorry. So you see, higher price, almost the same and a little bit the same or a little bit higher price. So you see, August, interesting month. But look in October, it's very clear in October, very, very clear. So have a look here, falling, strong falling, and falling. You see, in October, the last three years, falling prices in Euro. Also, almost in November. So you can see two times falling prices in November, only in one year we had higher prices. So December, we have different expressions. So, but look at this one in March. Interesting. Very, very interesting. It's the Euro. 
So we don't know. Uh, we will have falling prices in March if I can uh, 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 reload it. But in three years, we have higher prices in Euro. Only this one year or this one, we have falling prices. So three times up, two times low. Um, and here you can see in April, higher prices, almost higher prices. And of course, even we had a, uh, we have a sharply decrease in Euro, at the end, higher prices. In April, rising up of Euro. So what we can do this year in Euro, Okay, I don't know. We have to look at the chart, but let's do it uh, a little bit later. Okay, but it's interesting. This is a special, uh, this is Euro against uh, uh, USD, of course. So you can uh, do it with almost every uh, currency pair. Okay, so what's next? Okay. So how to trade now this, such, this kind of patterns? Regardless of the asset you choose to trade, you are always trading the price. Never forget that, guys. It's not Euro. It's not USD. And that's, believe, that was the point why the, it's the wrong question. Doesn't matter. It is Euro, USD, you trade the price. So always, you always trade the price. So as we have discussed in previous webinars, a price can be cheap, expensive, or in a fair value so. And I explained it very often, that's the point, that's the thing. Seasonal patterns, don't change anything about that fact. If you watch at seasonal patterns, never forget you trade the price. And even you have higher prices or lower prices. So information, but seasonal behavior can support you in your trading with even large traders with huge accounts trading seasonal patterns. So let's again back to coffee. Coffee is uh, such a um, commodity, of course. So, it's, so we have the, we have the, uh, we have harvest, we have the, uh, the planting uh, planting uh, season, and we have the the farmers, and they have huge accounts because they have to make their um, their short positions in a future market. So even you know that you can trade in the same direction, but you have to compare and you have to know how the large traders in the market will think about that. And if you want to know it exactly, you have to call the farmers and you have to ask them what's the result of your harvest this year? Or what's, it, what's your prediction this year? So I guess you cannot do that. So that's the point why you have to compare the seasonal patterns with your current chart. Even you want to trade Euro USD, doesn't matter. So moreover, the strength of seasonality is so deep that traders who do not use the seasonal patterns or are not aware of them show a clear disadvantage compared to other traders. Guys, there is one exception. This is valid for higher time frames, daily charts, weekly chart. Seasonal patterns are not interesting if you are a day trader, not in five minute charts. Here we talk about higher time frames, daily chart, weekly chart. If you want to make an investment or if you want to invest in a trade or in an asset due one month or, one, or more than one week, for example, then you have to watch. Then you have to uh, look at the seasonal patterns. But this is really, no, don't forget that you trade with this in the same chart like the huge traders. You trade the same. There is no kindergarten. There is no uh, preschool. There is no high school. There's no university in the market. No, there's only one school. There is one university. And the same trader which, which is placed in Brazil 
and his trade in the futures because he has to uh, hatch the price of his harvest. It works in this guy, works in the same place like you if you want to trade CFDs on coffee or options of coffee. It is, yes, it's just indeed, it's a different instrument, but it is the same place and it's the same market. Please never forget that this is really, really important. So how to trade in each of these patterns? If you want to use seasonal patterns in your trading, if you want to use it, you must know where you can find information about them. Uh, I give you uh, two things, seasonalcharts.com and Suricate Trading, it's a German side, DE seasonal charts. I want to show you right now. But if you want to trade with seasonal patterns, you will find everything you need there because you want to see what will happen next month in average. It's guys, it's not the holy grail. It's an average based on the last three, five or 10 years. So as you saw in the, in the charts I, sh uh, I showed you a couple of minutes ago, it's not the holy grail. It's not an exactly prediction. It's an average what happens in the last years and what could happen in the next year. So the same as we know, we will get the next summer, but I don't know we will get a hot summer or a medium summer. So I know I will get a harvest in coffee or in sugar soy or in, or in wheat or in something else, but I don't know it's a good harvest or it's a bad harvest. So, and this year, to be honest, guys, this year is everything different. We have coronavirus. This year is everything different. Here in Germany, people complain because they don't have any help from abroad, from the people. They're helping people from the harvest. We miss them here in Germany because the borders of the, uh, of the countries are closed. They cannot come over. So people in Germany are really afraid that we have a bad harvest in every fruits or vegetables we have to earn here or to harvest here in Germany. So big, big problems. So I would do a different thing. I would send all guys, they, have, they are not employed at the moment. I would send them straight to the field and make the harvest instead sitting at home and playing PlayStation or something, stupid things. So, but that's my <laughs> private opinion. So after you took a look at to see in which direction the price could go based on such, say, seasonal patterns, you can then watch your chart. Okay, so um, let's do it. And this is the coffee future. This is seasonalcharts.com. So let's practice trading seasonal patterns. Take a look at this seasonal, chart, uh, pa this seasonal chart and then use the chart to figure out where we are in the price and the current uh, trend. Let's see how we can do that. So maybe you can see that's over the last 70, uh, 37 years, the coffee future. So you can see in April, here, let's see in April, this here is April. So today we have the 1st of April, it fits exactly. So in April, we can see the behavior of coffee at in the average of the last 37 years. So you can see in April, first to the mid of April, we go down and then to be honest, at the bit, Till the almost the end or the mid of May, we have higher prices in coffee. That's the average of the last 37 years. But to be honest, guys, we cannot know, of course not, we cannot know if it's happened this year. But if we know that, that we will have higher prices at the end of May, now let's have a look at the chart. So, and I don't have coffee here. I want to show it here in this, in this one. 
So this is coffee, future. So now it's the daily chart. So first of all, full history. So you see where we are about the price. And this is really interesting. Look at this one again. In average, we go down till the mid of April and then we go up and up. So now where we are right now, do we have a trend? Yes, basically I would say we have an uptrend, but actually we are far away from my fairest price because the fairest price is placed at 102 dollars in coffee future. But if we assume that we will fall down, falling down till the end, till the mid of April, it's really, really nice that we follow this trend and the price will go down to the point of control. And then till the mid of May, maybe it's here. If the price will go down and will make a rebound here at the point of control or close to this point of control, then we can assume that we will go up maybe to this point 142 or higher. So look at the lower price uh, mid of May. So, and this is the seasonal, look at this one. So this is the seasonal prediction. So we can assume that the price in this one, uh, based on the last five years, this is the seasonal prediction of the last five years. So we have a little bit sideways phase, but at the end we go up again. But we have a really huge prediction in average of the last 73 years, a little bit go up and then, uh, do, uh, sorry, go down and then go up. And I guess this is really, really interesting and it would fit exactly to my current price, go down to the current price, to the point of control, then stay in, of course, in this uh, trend. And maybe we can use Fibonacci as well. Then we will see have an interesting number, exactly 78% of the last move, it will correct it at the point of control and then go away. But don't forget, it's not the Holy Grail guy. It's not the Holy Grail, you have to watch the chart. Maybe we will have at this last point, at, let's, at this last point too, one fifteen dollars then we will see a rebound here and then we go up earlier. I don't know, manage your risk. But in that way, you can predict a little bit the price. So let's switch to uh, maybe this one. Look at it, I have, uh, this is natural gas. So I will show you this side. This is a seasonal chart. So here we go. Yes, this is seasonal chart. And let's see natural gas. Here we have natural gas. So about the last, yes, let's take 10 years. So what we can see here in the last 10 years uh, in April. So in April last year, you can see a little bit higher prices. So basically in April in natural gas, we can see we have, uh, just have a look here. In natural, in April, we have higher prices. You see in average and last year, as well, higher prices. Most of the times, same price or higher prices, almost higher prices. So this is really interesting. So if you know we have an average in April in natural gas, in average of the last 10 years, we will get in April higher prices or rising prices, use it and now have a look at your chart. So this is natural gas in daily chart. So you see, this is a seasonal pattern indicator as well, and it fits really interesting. So you see, in we are, we have two interesting information. First of all, we are deep in an unfair price zone. 
the point, the fairest price, natural gas, is placed at around nine point uh, two point nine eight. So we are deep in the lower green zone. So we have a little bit divergence on the low side. And look at this one. This is the prediction of the seasonality in April. You remember? And now we can assume or we can speculate on higher prices. This one till maybe the end of April, maybe. So, and this is the way, a very, very interesting way you can combine seasonalities, seasonal patterns to the chart. Maybe let's have a look at um, palladium. So let's see this one. And uh, first of all, I have a look at palladium. Here we go. Last 10 years, this is suricate trading. Amazing. It's one of my wonderful guys here in Germany, Adrian. Um, I, I love this site. So what happened in April in Palladium? Oh, it's very interesting. Look. Uh, in April, it's this one. So you see most of the times, so the last 10 years, in Palladium, we have higher prices, rising prices. Look at this one. Even last year, a little bit higher. Look at almost in every year, same or higher prices. That's interesting. And with this in our mind, that in April, Palladium will rise up. Now, let's have a look. So probabilities are rising prices in Palladium in April. Take a look at the chart. This is Palladium. And now look at what the seasonals about the last five years here. And now where we are in the chart, this is daily chart. Mm. This is, this year is a little bit different because we have coronavirus and we are, we are going straight away in the next bad R word recession. So, and then all the commodities or metals or something else will go down but i don't know maybe we will have a zero number a zero game this year but i guess we don't have a trend right now and maybe we will go down you see to the point of control and at the end here we go nothing will happen till the end maybe we will go down and then a little bit up but uh, this is i don't know what will happen so palladium is really, really interesting. So let's make a last example, please. Then uh, I'm, I'm done with my time. Unfortunately, I could tell you so many things about that. So let's see um, gold. Yes, gold about the last 10 years. What will happen in April? So you see in April, it's not a great expression in april so falling same price up a little down same price up a little bound down this is about the last uh, 10 years so about the last five years so you see in april let's see this is april interesting up higher prices last year almost higher prices and one two three year almost the same or this one so let's have a look at gold in the chart so about the seasons we see maybe more than higher prices in april so let's see in the chart of course let's see a gold let's take daily chart so you see interesting right so both thing can happen so we are far away from the point of control. Maybe the price will go down to the point of control and then go up. But the seasonal shows us for the next weeks in April, maybe a little bit higher prices or maybe the same price. So I guess nothing will happen in April for this one, which means I don't have to trade gold in April this year because, you know, we have... Unfortunately, we have coronavirus as well. 
So guys, that was a little bit overview about, um, how should I say, the seasonal trades and seasonal patterns, how you can use it. And if you use it wisely, believe me, not in five minutes, not in hourly chart, daily chart, weekly chart, if you want to invest a little bit more, like a diversification. I do that. I trade most of the time the four hourly chart, but I combine it with weekly charts. And sometimes I use the CUT data and seasonal data. Even I want to trade gold, silver, blood, uh, palladium, platinum, or natural gas. Then I have to look at the seasonal trades, the seasonal charts that I have a direction, roundabout direction in that way. And then I have to look at the chart. So let's make a conclusion. Seasonal patterns are a very useful tool for swing traders and investors, not day traders. Again, swing traders and investors. And such patterns can help you predict future prices, but of course, they are not the holy grail. Please, they are not the holy grail. So seasonal patterns are a part of successful working and trading style. I guess this is really interesting. I hope I could explain it in a right way, in a right way that you can understand. If you have any question, please join our Trading Spotlight community on Traders Yard. Here you can see the, uh, the, the homepage, tradersyard.com. It's priceless to make a registration there. Come into our Trading Spotlight community there. You can ask whatever you want. I can share uh, the link of the recording or my uh, charts there if you have any questions. Let me know in that community. We can talk about everything. Friday, my wonderful congenious partner, Jens, is talking to Bu to do about advanced price action trend, uh, strategies, combining different trading time frames, including introduction to trend, progression, regression, accumulation, dispute, dis distribution, and different time frames. Friday, 3rd April, uh, same time same spot and the only thing i want to say guys i'm really glad i'm really grateful that you spent your lifetime with me that you shared your lifetime with me we have crazy times but we will stay together and we go through this crisis together if we understand that we can work together not against to each other there is no right or false on the right chart of the chart let's work together and then we can grow up in this crisis. And this, with this in your mind, stay cool, stay at home, and of course, keep healthy and take care for yourself and your beloved ones. Thank you guys for your time. I wish you all the best, and I hope we will see each other next Wednesday, same time, same place. And with this in your mind, be careful about your thoughts. You know, they are the beginning of your actions. See you. Bye-bye.